Chris Taylor's Total Annihilation was a formative game for me. I can still remember picking it up at Best Buy. I knew nothing about it except the box art featured cool gold foil lettering and the back had screenshots of awesome explosions. Little did I know I was going to be taking it home and playing it constantly for several years and that to this day I'd still have it installed on my hard drive. So, of course, when I heard that a team of developers were crafting a new spiritual successor, I was absolutely enraptured from the start. I pledged enough for Alpha Access to Planetary Annihilation. I eagerly visited the Kickstarter every day for new updates and details. And I was absolutely sold on uh, Uber Entertainment's vision for the new game. Now, a year and a half has passed since the Kickstarter raised $2.2 million dollars which was well more than double its original goal. And I'd like to say that Uber has used the time to craft a worthy successor to the Total Annihilation franchise, but that just isn't the case. Instead, I've found the game to be a huge disappointment, and here are five reasons why. The economy. Now, a cornerstone of the TA franchise is its unique economy. Unlike most RTS games, the resources in TA are potentially unlimited. You simply have to build or upgrade the proper structures and in the case of metal, find some veins to mine. Now, the system enables the titanic battles that are the series trademark. And at first, Uber seems to have reproduced the economy faithfully, but there are some major problems. The most serious is the sheer volume of resources thrown at you. Total Annihilation allowed epic battles, it's true, but you had to work for them. Crushing your enemy with a combined fleet was the result of effort. In Planetary Annihilation, the resources are so plentiful that you can easily build a huge army within 15 minutes. Some people would also call that unit span. The only limit on expansion seems to be how quickly you can click. Now, there can be too much of a good thing, and while allegedly... This game is a Total Annihilation successor. It really feels more like Supreme Commander 2, which was a watered-down version of the TA formula that made gameplay quicker and a little more accessible. There's no sense of weight or consequence to the battles because armies can be quickly rebuilt from your nearly unlimited income, and that makes them little more than pointless icons that you never actually care about. Reason number two is the maps. Planetary Annihilation's name is a nod towards the fact that unlike other games in the franchise, it allows combat across the surface of an actual randomly generated planet, rather than just a map that has boundaries. And that's a cool idea, but there's a problem, and that's the planets are uselessly small. Most feel barely larger than a small 8x8 map from the original Total Annihilation, and while larger planets can be made using the game's editing tools, they cause performance issues and are rarely actually seen in single or multiplayer. Epic battles aren't so epic when they take place on something that's the size of a beach ball. Now to make matters worse, the random maps lack any real meaningful terrain. The landscape is generally flat and whatever mountains exist are generally props that your units actually ignore and can't climb or stand on or use for any real advantage. There are not any meaningful valleys or mountains or strategic locations except for choke points and even those are actually rare on a lot of planets. In this respect uh, Planetary Annihilation is a huge step back from Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander. The map issue also leads to what I consider a cardinal sin and that's the lack of a meaningful navy. Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander saw players perform armed landings on enemy beaches complete with air support and artillery from battleships offshore. It was awesome. But this doesn't really happen in Planetary Annihilation because the so-called oceans are usually randomly generated tiny lakes that are of no real purpose at all. In fact, I have yet to encounter a situation where I had to use a single naval unit. And though apparently there are water planets... So far, I have not run into them in any of the Galactic War or in any multiplayer games. Reason number three, the units. Now, Total Annihilation had a wonderful selection of units. They weren't always that well balanced, but they made up for it with character and the potential to be awesome when their niche was needed. 
Supreme Commander messed with the balance a bit by making high tier units excessively powerful, but it made up for that by introducing awesome experimentals that were incredibly fun to build and use. Planetary Annihilation doesn't have experimentals, however, and to make matters worse, the vanilla units are pretty awful. They lack any sense of originality and don't behave in unique ways. In Total Annihilation, for example, the anti-air units equipped with guided missiles could be useful as raiders because they were accurate, quick, and had long range, even though raiding wasn't the real purpose. No such adaptation is possible in Planetary Annihilation because each unit has a very narrow role, which is usually determined by a single weapon system that's meant to do just one thing. The defensive structures are particularly pathetic. TA and SUPCOM were oddballs in the RTS genre because defenses could actually be used effectively for both defense and offense. And this is still a little bit true in Planetary Annihilation, but there's a much narrower selection of defenses, and the lack of meaningful terrain and near unlimited resources make defense far less effective than just spamming as many tanks as you possibly can. Reason number four, the interface. The scale of Planetary Annihilation is insane when you get to some of the larger maps that have multiple planets. In addition to planet-wide combat, the game tackles the interplanetary combat aspect, which includes not only building space vessels, but also landing on other worlds and even shoving planets at each other with giant engines, which creates the planetary annihilation, uh, the namesake of the game. Now, all this probably sounds pretty hard for an interface to handle, and so far there's no sign that planetary annihilation is even slightly up to the task. There's a lot of problems. The icons which represent units when zoomed out are not really that easy to read, and they often seem to blend together in large groups. The space layer is just a mess. It's ridiculously hard to use. It's very easy to accidentally select units that you don't want, and sometimes even units on the ground while trying to maneuver your vessels in orbit. And the building queue system doesn't always work properly. I found that often when building uh, we're trying to queue buildings, they would be snapped to odd locations, and other times I would be allowed to queue up buildings within each other, which of course some of them would not be built then. It just doesn't work the way that it should. Even the icons that are used to give commands to units are not particularly readable, and when the game is played at 1440p, they're really too small. I'm not sure this game would be that enjoyable to play even if other features were working because the game is hidden under an obtuse and difficult control scheme. Reason number five, the bugs. Planetary Annihilation is currently listed in Gamma. Now what does that mean? I can't say for sure because Gamma is not really something that games are listed as, but it does seem to indicate a game that's further along than normal, a game that's further along than beta, right? A gamer who picks this up would probably think that uh, it's reasonably stable and uh, feature complete based off the Gamma title. But Planetary Annihilation is neither stable nor feature complete. It's littered with bugs. It has a spastic camera that sometimes has a mind of its own. The net code is really atrocious and it's just it constantly has little glitches and freezes and I, I'd say probably 50% of the games I play end up with at least one player disconnecting. Um, the re recently introduced Galactic War, which is supposed to be a new single player feature, is actually incredibly shallow and really is barely even there. I, it, it's hardly even worth calling a feature. And it's going to need a lot of work before it's something that can be called com anywhere near complete. I've played alpha games, like for example Prison Architect, that are actually more stable and more enjoyable than this game. So, in conclusion, you know, Planetary Annihilation is, is really a huge disappointment. I really was hopeful that this game would bring another iteration on the Total Annihilation philosophy. It looks great. The developers said all the right things, at least at the beginning. But it's become apparent over time that the developers just perhaps aren't up to the task of creating what they envision. And a lot of the features that were supposed to be cool, like the planets, have actually worked out to be disadvantages. What I find most disturbing and disappointing about the game's current state is not necessarily the fact that it's still quite buggy and quite incomplete a year and a half after the Kickstarter has closed, because, you know, that's not necessarily that long of a time period 
to be putting together a big complex game. What I find to be disturbing is that a lot of the core features, like the units, the maps, the way the interface works, are not anywhere near being in a presentable state for a final game, and some of the flaws appear to be fundamental to the features themselves, not because of poor implementation necessarily, or because they just need more time to mature, but because the idea itself is just not working out and probably should be scrapped. The random planets are a perfect example of that. They are not working. They do not provide interesting terrain. They don't provide a chance to use all your different kinds of units to great effect. And so far, it seems like the game engine doesn't have the capability to handle planets large enough to provide really epic battles. You can make those planets in a designer, like I said earlier, but they don't necessarily run well. And, you know, God help you trying to play multiplayer on something like that because it's probably just not good. It's going to end in flames and crashing and burning and people disconnecting more likely than not. So all of this seems to indicate that Planetary Annihilation is really not shaping up too well right now. And considering that this is still a game that's basically $49.99, if you want to go in and buy it in the so-called Gamma State right now, that's really that's really too bad. This is not a game that I can recommend even to people who are big fans of Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander. If you like Supreme Commander, you know what? I suggest you go back, you get Supreme Commander for Alliance if you never played the expansion. It's excellent. Uh, pick up some of the AI mods so the AI is more challenging and just have a blast with that because that is a better game than this is right now both in terms of the final stability and also the the core concepts and fundamentals of the game are better thought out and better implemented than anything that's in Planetary Annihilation right now. So I hope the developers can get this back on track but right now I definitely recommend that you stay away from Planetary Annihilation. That'll about wrap it up. Let me know your uh, hate in the comments or your agreements in the comments. And feel free to subscribe if you like what you heard today. Thanks for watching.